Okay guys, welcome back for part three, part two, because for some reason I filmed this and my camera like hated it and nothing would play it, so I'm refilming it. So hopefully I'm able to bring the same amount of energy to it a second time through. Um, you know, in my last video, I gushed and gushed and gushed about Final Fantasy VI. And uh, now we're going to start kind of on the downward slide of Final Fantasy. It still starts off really good. Still starts off really good. But uh, eventually we're going to lose our way a little bit. So let's go ahead and start off with Final Fantasy VII. Now this game is pretty much responsible for the RPG boom of the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 era. For some reason this game came out and just clicked with everyone and then everyone wanted to play RPGs. So, um, for me, you know, this, everyone goes on about how this is their favorite Final Fantasy. Uh, for me, this is just, um, a very good Final Fantasy. I still think 6 is better. And, you know, there we go. I've said it. Um, you know, everyone goes on about Sephiroth, but, uh, I still think Kefka is better. And, um, but, you know, this is still a very high quality Final Fantasy. The music's fantastic. Uh, the graphics for the time were fantastic. They don't hold up very well. Um, if there's ever a game that needs a PlayStation 3 remake, it is Final Fantasy VII. Not Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy VII. I would even take it on the Vita if they want to go that route. But um, it definitely needs to be remade because um, the graphics are just... I mean, you know, back in the PlayStation 1 and 64 days, those graphics have not really aged well. Um, and this is, you know, proof in point. But um, a very good quest, you know, and gosh, I forgot for the first video and I forgot for this one. I wanted to bring over Crisis Core and talk about Crisis Core. It's on the PSP. It's a prequel to this. It's probably the only essential um, part of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. Um, I do plan on getting Dirge of Cerebus with Vincent Valentine, but, um, you know, this is still a fantastic Final Fantasy just, I don't think it's the best game ever made, like most people, you know, think. Then we come to this, which, um, a lot of people hated Final Fantasy VIII. You know, this is kind of where it started not to feel like Final Fantasy. They started messing with the formula a little bit. Um, I actually still really like this. The only thing I didn't like about it was that the graphics were now realistic instead of being super deformed. So, but the music was fantastic in this. Um, one of the best scores to a game ever. You know, you have that opening cinematic with um, Liberi Fatali playing, and then you get the, the, the scenes of all the characters and Squall, and it's just very good. Um, and, you know, I didn't talk so much about it on the last video, which I really should have, but these Final Fantasies are always known for big set pieces. There's always a big set piece in every Final Fantasy. And uh, this one was the ballroom scene. And for the time that this came out, that ballroom scene was jaw-dropping. Much in the same way that the opera scene in Final Fantasy VI, which I really should have talked about in the last video, but the opera scene in Final Fantasy VI was also pretty jaw-dropping as well. But, um, you know, just seeing Squall and Renoa dancing around, it, it, it mean, there's no voice, no nothing, just music and images. But still, it's a very, very um, kind of moving scene. The storyline, I don't really remember much about it. It just, it turns out all these guys know each other from the past, being kids, and um, it involves some time travel and stuff. It, it kind of got a little confusing by the end of it, but um, I really did enjoy Final Fantasy VIII. I thought it was really good. But it was not as good as Final Fantasy IX. Now, Final Fantasy IX is the best PlayStation Final Fantasy, and it's probably my third favorite Final Fantasy of all of them. Um, you know, this was a real love letter to the fans. With 7 and 8, and even 6, they kind of went into a more steampunk, cyberpunk um, direction than the original medieval feel to the games. So with 9, you know, before they jumped to the PlayStation 2, they wanted to do one last love letter to the original fans who loved Final Fantasy from back in the day. And this one came through with flying colors. Um, you know, I, looking at this now, I'm just thinking about, you know, Zidane and his many attempts at trying to, you know, 
sneak a, sneak off with Garnet and you know have a little little love making session. Um, I think there's one. I remember one scene where he like grabs her ass. That was pretty funny in this. And then you got Vivi here, who Vivi is you know he kind of came a little bit of a mascot. I think for a little bit because he is a really endearing character. You feel really bad for him because his story is it's probably one of the more tragic stories in a Final Fantasy. You really kind of feel bad for him um, in several parts of the game, but um, you know, in the end, of course, he comes through. And but uh, you know, the music to this was fantastic. They brought back the four party, four person battle party. Um, just an excellent, excellent game from start to finish. I don't know if it's on PSN, but if it is, go out, download it, or go try to find yourself a copy of this and play it because it really is one of the best Final Fantasies. And it really doesn't get the credit it deserves. Final Fantasy IX, one of the best ones. And then we get to 10. Okay. Um, I was super excited for 10 when it was announced. You know, we just came off of 9, things were looking good. I mean, looking at the pictures, still looking at the pictures, they look the graphics still look really good. Um, you know, and then they made a big deal about the voice acting. Now, the voice acting is not Arkwright's Fantasia bad, but it is still pretty bad. Um, I really wish it didn't have voice acting because I'm not a big fan of voice acting, really. I kind of like to give the characters my own voice. Um, but, uh, you know, some games do voice acting really well, like Tales of Vesperia. But not this one so much. Um, this, you know, this one, after Final Fantasy IX, really felt like a Final Fantasy again. Uh, this one, not so much. It um, just kind of feels like a generic RPG with Final Fantasy tacked onto it. And that's really kind of what the series has become in a lot of ways. Um, you know, what else can I say about Final Fantasy X? It's got a very... It does have actually a pretty good story between Titus and Yuna, if just Titus wasn't so fucking annoying. Um, but I did really like Yuna's character. I liked Oren a lot. He was a really cool character. Um, and it introduced Riku. Who we'll talk about Riku in a second. But, um, still very moving. Um, a pretty good game. Not so great of a Final Fantasy, but still worth looking at. I don't know why they're doing an HD remake of this. I don't really think it needs it, but I'm not Square Enix. Whatever. So then, like I said, we'll talk about uh, Riku a little bit here in 10 2. Now, at the end of 10, here's a little spoiler, guys. Um, in saving the world, you know, Yuna is supposed to sacrifice herself, but it ends up Titus is the one that um, disappears because they, they change how they're going to do defeat Sin. But uh, so 10 2 involves Yuna setting out with Riku, who's wearing less clothes that are. I mean, she might as well just be naked in the game, to be honest with you. I mean, she just has next to nothing on. And, of course, the dark, moody girl who they named Pain. All right. So she sets out with these two other girls um, to sort of find out what happened to Titus and see if they can bring him back. And um, this is a more lighthearted game. Um, it's not as, you know, this kind of got depressing in some places with sort of the choices that the, the team were facing. Um, but this one's a little bit more lighthearted. It's kind of cool to see, you know, the characters, where they're at now and stuff. I kind of do like this idea of making sequels to, you know, games. It's just that I wish they'd make, like, a sequel to 9 or make, like, a sequel to 6. You know, we got this. We, we're going to have 13 2 here in a little bit, and we have the after years for 4. So I kind of like going back and seeing where the characters are at now and stuff. It's kind of cool, but this isn't really that great of a game. I haven't beat it yet. Um, I was playing it, and I kind of lost interest in it, and just kind of let it go by the wayside. I plan on getting back to it, because I do kind of want to see how it ends, but, uh, you yeah. know, 10-2. And, as you see, I don't have 11, because I don't play MMOs, and I was really miffed when they announced that 11 was going to be online only. Um, I might pick it up just to have all the numbered games. I don't know why they just didn't call it Final Fantasy Online and have it be its own thing, but... Once again, I'm not Square Soft and I'm not losing my or Square Enix. I'm not losing my mind. So, Steelbook Edition, limited edition of Final Fantasy XII. Um, I don't know how well the camera picks this up or not. It might just look like a black blob in my hand. But um, this one really got really far from the Final Fantasy formula with the Gambit system and sort of the real-time 
combat. Um, I did kind of enjoy it while I was playing it, but once again, um, I think something else came out and I started playing that and then I kind of forgot where I was at in this, even though I have two strategy guides for this because I found a limited edition one in a half price books and snatched it up. But um, this has in it probably what is one of the most sexy characters in a Final Fantasy, which is Fran. You know, a lot of people say Riku is the sexiest character in Final Fantasy because she's wearing next to nothing, but Fran is just all class. Um, it makes Riku look like a little tramp. But, um, you know, aside from that, the storyline, I don't really remember much because it's been a while since I've played this, and the storyline was kind of confusing back in the day anyway. But uh, I do like that it kind of takes place in the Final Fantasy Tactics world with the judges and, you know, references to Ivalis and things like that. It kind of reminded me of, made me think back to Final Fantasy Tactics. But um, I do plan on getting back to this and playing it again and beating it because I, I do like to beat my games. It's just hard with RPGs because they take so long to play, you know? And finally, we have Final Fantasy XIII. Um, it kind of hurts me to say Final Fantasy when I talk about this game because this is not Final Fantasy. Um, it's a good game. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a good RPG. Um, but I really wish it did not have the Final Fantasy name on it because it just does not feel like a Final Fantasy. And I might be talking like some kind of purist here, but um, Final Fantasy is all about exploration. And I really feel like gameplay-wise, in a lot of ways, the Final Fantasy series has taken a backseat in gameplay to sort of the flashiness. Like, they've been trying to remake Final Fantasy VII for years now. Like, trying to have a game with that kind of impact again. And it's never going to have that kind of impact again because that was a moment of its time. This, um, I mean, I played it, I beat it, and I'm at the post game where you can level everybody up to 99 and get, you know, the achievements and blah, blah, blah. I don't think I'll ever do it. Um, you know, I just, I enjoyed it while I played it, but at the, the entire time I was playing it, I was like, what the fuck is this? Because this is not Final Fantasy. I just, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts on Final Fantasy XIII? You know, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people say it's their favorite, one of their favorite Final Fantasies. Um... I don't know. I, I miss not having money. I miss, you know, buying weapons. I miss I miss feeling like I have control over my characters. Like, the game practically plays itself, and everything's in a straight line. I don't know. <sighs> when I finally got the Grand Pulse, it was nice that it opened up, but it was kind of too little too late by that point in time. So, really, I hope they look at this, and I hope they look at, you know, what's going on with 14, and I hope they, with 15, which I've, I think I've seen some kind of rumors online of, of 15 being you know in development i really hope they kind of take it back to a more traditional uh final fantasy feel than sort of these modern ones because you know final fantasy to me it really is like the girl that you had the crush on in high school that back then she was perfect you know nothing could touch her and then you know as you've grown older you start to realize things you know she changes and uh, you don't really like who she's become now in the present. And uh, that's sort of my thoughts on Final Fantasy. Like, when I was a little kid, I mean, if you watched part two of this series, you know Final Fantasy VI was where it was at with me. But um, now it's, it's just kind of become another series that I play, you know? It, it doesn't hold the same sense of wonder that it used to. And, and that's really kind of sad. I'm really sad that Final Fantasy has kind of gone this route for me. You know, you guys might still think it's great, but uh, for me, it's really kind of, I don't know, it's really kind of been lacking here in the last couple installments. So really, I hope Final Fantasy XV is really good, but um, I'm sort of, you know, not really holding out any hopes for it. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of Final Fantasy, you know? Watch part one and part two and let me know what you think about the classic games versus the modern games. Um, you know, most people agree that the older games are better, but, um, you know, let me know what you guys think. I'll see you next video.